think I've owned over 15 Joker statues, and a lot of them are different. Some of them are Heath Ledger, some of them are Jack Nicholson, and I've sold quite a few as well. As you can see, this is kind of a comic-based one, and he's in a throne, but does that justify another Joker purchase? This one comes with extra legs, and I am a leg man. Hey, my name is Mr. X. Welcome to the Extreme Channel. We are giving away $1,000 statues to you guys. If you want to know how to win one, stay tuned for later in the video. Hey, thank you so much for tuning in. Today, we're looking at Prime One Studio Joker on Throne statue. So this is one-third scale, and it's actually meant to pair with another statue that I have upstairs in a box. It's meant to pair with Joker's new girlfriend, Punchline. And we're going to talk all about that when we do a review on that statue. But I'm also going to display them together because that's how they're meant to be. If you want to see what that looks like, check out the Extreme Channel social media, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Because by the time this is launched, those pictures have already been made public. But I was really hesitant to buy this statue from Prime One Studio because, as I said, there are so many amazing Joker statues. Whether they're from different iterations of the DC Cinematic Universe or just comic in general. Now I have whittled down my collection. These are the current Joker statues that I own. Quite a few of them are Heath Ledger, this Queen Studios Heath Ledger bust. I've been trying to sell this Prime One Heath Ledger, one third scale, as well as this Queen Studios Heath Ledger cop for a while. I still own most of these other than the Jack Nicholson ones. And then this Iron Studios. And then some more movie ones, this Jack Nicholson bust, the Queen Studios Joaquin Phoenix bust, and then also by Prime One Studio, this Joaquin Phoenix one-third scale. And now this guy has joined the collection. Now, originally, I was just going to get Punchline. But the more I looked at him, I actually had a good friend, the Todd father from Spec Fiction. He was over at my house, and he got me drunk enough to order this one directly from him and also the Punchline. So make sure to check them out on social media. I'm going to put a link in the description below so you can grab not only Prime One pieces, but a lot of other companies as well. But anyway, I was kind of torn on this because it is a throne statue. And I have an entire statue wall of throne statues. You can actually check out a, a older video right here. It's changed since then. But the problem with those, those are all one-fourth scale, so smaller than this. So this is going to go in my DC collection. I'm also going to throw up some pictures of that. Because believe it or not, I'm almost done with my DC collection, which means another countdown is coming. We'll talk more about that in the punchline video. For now, let's talk about this guy, and we're going to kick off the review starting with concept. Now, this is a conceptual piece by Jorge Jimenez, and I believe that's how it's pronounced, Jimenez. But anyway, he this is from his concept, and kind of what he went for here, you can see it on the statue, is it's a throne. We think this is Joker's lair. So the reason why we think it's Joker's lair is all the different things you see. You see a Batman plush doll. You see some film. Joker loves to view film. He's kind of almost in a theater chair. You see some Joker rings. That's, you know, Batarang that he's kind of copied Batman from. He's sitting back very relaxed. And you saw there's a few different poses we're going to look at doing. He's still dolled up, though. Joker always likes to look good. He has his suit and his leather jacket sitting in the back behind that. Maybe he's trying to impress Punchline because she's supposed to sit right behind him. You'll see that in the upcoming review. And he looks really sinister. So here I have him displayed where he actually has Batman's mask. Maybe he's already killed Batman. But a lot of these more point to the fact he's plotting against Batman, which is what he always does. And he has something good. You can tell by that amazing sinister portrait. He just looks awesome. You know, and a lot of people talk about Joker as one of the greatest villains of all time. I completely agree. The true Joker in the comics is so sadistic and crazy and nuts, and that's been semi-captured on film before, I think, but not truly. And I think because of that, it's easy to make statues of him that are amazing, because Prime One has made so many amazing statues of the Joker. Many I've owned, many I haven't owned, but I love this concept. I love that it's different. He's sitting down. While Tweeterhead recently had some throne statues in the 1-4 scale and 1-6 scale, I still think this is a 5 out of 5 for originality. I love every part of it. I think it encompasses Joker fantastically. Design, they actually did a really good job too. The only issue I had is one of the felt pads on the bottom fell out during shipping, and then the glued part got stuck to the wax paper, so I'm going to have to figure out how to glue it back on. But otherwise, everything was good. 
Check out the unboxing and assembly. Really nice that they were able to get it inside of one box. As an art box, I didn't pull it out, but it also included a uh, brochure for more Prime 1 statues and, of course, the instructions. This is their standard foam. There was a compartment on top for the bonus edition. It's an art print. Pretty cool. And then two layers. You can see the first layer right here. And then Joker and his body are all part of the uh, throne piece right here in the second layer. Tons of switch out options, and it depends on which version you buy. There's a deluxe bonus version, which I have, which has everything, and then a regular version. So first, the regular version, the only options are the open legs, as you can see right here. But with the deluxe, you have one where he's crossing his legs, which I like a little bit better. It looks a little bit more natural. The regular version, on his right hand, he's holding the batarangs. That's your only option. However, if you get the bonus, he has the clown mask, which is pretty cool, or the classic Joker cane. Now the regular version, he just has this hand towards his face on his left hand. This is where he's kind of plotting, and I really like this. I really like everything, actually. Or you can switch it out for the bat mask. And again, the bat mask is only with the deluxe bonus version. Now, there's only one portrait, but I don't think there needs to be any more because this is one of the best Joker portraits I've ever seen. I wouldn't call it the best, but it's damn in the top three easily. Now, if you really wanted to, a couple of these batarangs in the side, or sorry, Joker rings, you could remove, but I don't know. And then, of course, you have the display option of Punchline. She's made, you'll see in the upcoming video, to go right behind him, but you could put her next to him or in a totally different display. So... Anyway, I think the design is fantastic. I like how they had felted pads. I don't know if you saw that in the unboxing and assembly, not only on the legs, but also on the mask, so it never brushes up or scratches other parts of it. The only flaw I could find in the design is with his legs spread open, which I'm pretty sure I'm gonna put back in the box, he wasn't quite touching the ground. I don't know if that was intentional or not. But either way, I'm gonna give it a five out of five on design. While I don't think it's perfect, it's damn good. I think the switch outs are excellent. Everything fits together really well. And I like the displayability of him. So he is a little bit wide. He's about 20 inches wide. Uh, the deepest part, depending which legs you have displayed, are between 11 and 15. And then the tallest part, if you have the Batman mask, is only 21 inches. It's about 20 inches without that. So not very deep, which is great. Not very tall, so you can fit him in a normal shelf. Although punchline is huge, so it'll be interesting to see how those look. Paint and Sculpt, Prime One Studio, I've said this for years, their bread and butter, their absolute best thing is one-third scale DC. This is not an exception by any means. Now before we go into the video for Paint and Sculpt, people often ask me, uh, how do you film your stuff, in what order, and sometimes you have to speculate and guess. You're going to see some of that coming up. Extreme Channel members know because they get access to raw videos. You can check out what that is in the behind the scenes description in the link of this video. Or in the, no, the descript. Fuck, you're messing with me, dude. Let's just do it. I always hesitate using the word sick when I uh, describe a statue because I'm just too old for that. But uh, this is sick. So starting with the throne, we talked about how it's like kind of a mix of everything but it just really works. This looks like real brick that's been broken up. You can see some interior brick there. And then the ha ha ha, almost on like this blood pattern. Then that metallic shiny J in the back. Now, what I really like though, like, uh, and I explained this a little bit, 
at least I think I did. I'm filming this before I filmed the other one, which is kind of weird. But is that it's not as cool as some Easter eggs on other thrones that are in the back you can't see. Now, with that, check out his jacket. Still a little bit of a white packaging on it. But this looks like a real leather jacket. It's fully sculpted. Whether it's the seams we're looking at or just the way it falls on him, I think is excellent. It's very realistic. These uh, Joker Batarangs have that shine, and I think it adds to the goofiness of the statue, just like the Jays or the little plushie of Batman down below. The cinema tickets and the films. These look like real film cartridges, although in defense, I haven't seen them in person before. You have some wood on the back of the throne there, the chair. And then the cushion he's, he's sitting on, very puffy cushion, so his ass is probably comfortable, but looks great, looks old and worn. Looks like it's a real cushion underneath that. So the throne is good, but the, the star really is Joker. Everything from the sculpted laces and almost like a, uh, it looks like a, a material on his socks, these shiny shoes. And I love the pattern on his pants. That linear pattern almost look like, looks like corduroy. And again, the folds fall really well. The folds and creases, like uh, the clothing is very natural. You gotta remember when you're sitting in a position like that, um, these sculptors, they look at real life examples of how would my, my clothes fall if I sat in this position. You can see more of the jacket, the inside of the leather jacket there. His vest. The bow tie could have been a little bit better. It's more of a comic-y vibe where I feel like the rest of this is very realistic. The clothing is just phenomenal though. Not only the mix of the colors, but the way it's sculpted and the way it falls. Even his leather gloves, the seam lines on the inside of the fingers. Then his portrait, let me take this off. First, the battering looks great. There's some of the soft felt on the inside, or not the battering, but the bat mask, old and worn. You know, the cows are, are uh, more of a hard material, so that makes sense. But look at this amazing portrait. I love the way the hair flows and the dye in the hair goes from dark to light. I love how the makeup is caked on. And then his evil expression, like we talked about, is just amazing. Look at the eyes. Those could be glass eyes, I'm not sure. I love the teeth, perfect amount of yellowing, perfect expression. That portrait is absolutely amazing, or sick, so to say. But they did an absolutely great job on the paint and sculpt in this. As I said, they, they rarely disappoint, although I haven't said it yet, but I will. But you'll have already heard it. Got that? Paint, absolutely phenomenal. I like Joker better than the base. I think the base would be a four, but Joker's a five out of five without a doubt. Sculpt, same exact thing. I think base is four, but Joker, what you bought him for is five out of five. You buy this for the Joker, not for the throne. And this is an extremely well done statue. Now the real question is, I have six different things I rate, and we're through four of them, and I gave top scores to everything. Will this continue? I don't know, we're gonna talk about value next. So they made 600 of these, 600. 100 were the regular versions, very limited. They didn't have all the additional switch outs. Those retailed for $1,300, $1,299. Now, if you wanted all the switch outs, you pay $200 more for that, which is a lot. They made 500 of these because everybody wanted all the switch outs, whether it's the legs or the bat mask. So 600 edition size is actually pretty low for a Joker statue, believe it or not. The problem with this is all the competition there is. You know, it's hard for me to rate statues on value. So I was recently um, responding to a comment by one of the people that comment all the time, one of the, the viewers, um, who's a great supporter of the channel. And they're like, you say you don't care about the value of a statue, but you have a category where you rank the value. Well, it's more for you guys and kind of an objective way to do it. But nowadays with the economy so bad, it's hard. Almost every statue you buy instantly loses value. It's like a car nowadays. So if I wanted to resell this, the problem is they're still available and you have so many other Joker statues to pick from and this is $1,500. And some of those amazing Joker statues, like the Iron Studios one I had right here, was like $600 on sale when I bought it. So this was $1,500. It's not three times better than that other statue. It might be twice as good. But anyway, so I think the value is a two out of five on this. 
And I might change that tune a little bit when we get the punchline with it, but we'll see. Does it have the X Factor? Is this my new favorite Joker statue? I don't think he's my new favorite, but I definitely think he gives that Bermejo uh, from Batman Damned a run for its money. That was my favorite, but I could see myself selling that one before I sold this. So I think this is a five out of five statue. I think this is fantastic. I love what Prime One did. I love uh, the concept, the paint, the sculpt. It is really, really good. Huge fan of this. Wish it was one four scale, so I'd put it with my, I would, I would put it with my throne statues. But going to put them with my one-third scale DC. If you Again, if you want to see what that's like, check out social media, Extreme Channel. It's in the description below. But I really appreciate you guys. What do you think he ranks in regards to other Joker statues with so many great choices? Is he one of the top? Do you not like him? Throw that down in the comments below. That comment could win you a statue. As we try to grow this channel, we like to reward you guys for watching and subscribing. So because of that, every 5,000 milestone when it comes to subscribers we give away a couple thousand dollars worth of statues. We've actually given away over 20 statues. To win one is easy. First, you gotta be subscribed to the channel. You'll get bell notifications when videos drop. Each video that drops, you wanna make a comment on those videos. We pick a random video, we give away statues. Based on a comment, you can say whatever you want. The more videos you comment on, the higher your chances are to win. Thank you so much to Spec Fiction. Thank you to you guys for watching, I really appreciate it. Please drop a like for this amazing guy, and it makes me feel better so I can sleep at night. I actually, that's not true. I don't sleep.